we have been looking at false teachers and um, false uh, prophets, false messages, and uh, trying to get a fuller understanding because there's a lot of stuff going on right now, um, a lot of false teachers and false prophets out there, but there's also a lot of people calling people false teachers and false prophets. So we, we first looked at the thought that, hey, not everything is false. Not everyone is false. You know, sometimes you have somebody who, who makes who makes a mistake. You know, it's not like... Um, it's not like our faith was in that person, you know, people, even the most genuine of people make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. This idea that, you know, um, you can never, you can never make the, it's just, you, you can never make, um, make a mistake. It's just not true. God can call a pastor, right? He calls someone to pastor a church, right? And uh, in the course of that, uh, that pastor's time there, maybe he makes a mistake. Maybe he, um, you know, uh, and maybe he lies about something. Maybe he um, isn't as good with the finances as he could be. You know, it's things like that. Maybe it's intentional. Maybe it's ex accidental. But does that mean that God didn't really call him there? That God doesn't really want him there? No, of course not. It means that he sinned because we are all sinners. Like even Christians are sinners. Our faith is in our goodness. That somehow, because we're Christians, now we're going to um, not be a sinner anymore. No, we're all still going to make mistakes, and we're all still going to need Jesus' redemption and forgiveness even till death. So that was like the first thing that we were talking about. But then uh, last time we talked about was look at the quality, like look at the word itself. And you can weigh that against what the Bible says and you can, you know, kind of be convicted in your heart or whatnot. And there's, there's different things, different tests. Well, today I want to look at the idea of look at the person themselves. Um, another way you could say it is consider the source. So God... <sighs> God will use, can use, let's be like that, God can use anyone, but there are typically some people he's not going to use. It's not that he can't use them, it's just that he decides not to use them. And uh, people who are um, fall, like manipulators and, and liars, he's typically not going to use them. Um, for things. He's typically not going to use uh, somebody who has an attitude problem to give a word to a pastor. Because he's not going to have somebody who's not under authority, right? He's typically not going to have somebody who interrupts the middle of, of the sermon to say, I have a word from God and I just can't hold it in. Because he, the real true prophets are people that he gives the... Um, he, he, this, the Bible says that the spirit of, of the prophet is subject to the prophet. And so it's not, he's not going to do something like that. He's not going to create chaos because the Holy Spirit doesn't create chaos. There's going to be... Um, there's going to be signs like, okay, what about love? It, it, when, it, when a word is really from God, typically it won't just be the word of God, it'll also be the heart of God, where they'll say what God wants them to say, and they'll say it with the right attitude. Because both are just as important. Like the like the real famous love chapter of 1 Corinthians. What is he really talking about there? Uh, you know, all these things about love. Everybody uses uses that those verses, you know, with their, um, with their marriage, with their wedding. But... If you look at the context, he's actually talking about in our ministry and in, in words being given. Hey, if I'm speaking with the tongues of men and of angels, I have full understanding, but I don't have love. It's just noise. So so this is something that's, that's kind of important. So let's look at the idea of, um, of the, the, a false person. Let's look at the person themselves. Now, keep in mind that a lot of times false teachers and false prophets, they're going to be very convinced that what they're saying is from God, that they are the voice of God. They are next to God, like they are They are even with God. Maybe even in some places they're more than Jesus. And um, and then they'll use different, you know, when they're going to the Bible, they'll, they'll twist scripture to make that back up their view because that's what they want to believe. And here's the thing that I want you to get from that. Just because they believe does not mean that you have to believe. They can be fully convinced that a word is from God. And that doesn't make it from God. That just means that they're convinced in their own minds. So, you know, we have this idea of what a false prophet or false teacher looks like. They're always manipulators who mislead people. Sometimes they themselves are misled. So some, there's different kinds of false, right? There's some who are intentionally false and then some who are accidentally false. How can you possibly become accidentally false? Well, one of the ways that we become accidentally false is when we don't trust the Bible. We don't, we don't, we don't follow God's direction. We don't obey God, we try and kind of do our own thing, and then we get misled by our own lies. So the Bible says this, but 
I think I know better than God. The Bible says, hey, don't be unequally yoked. I shouldn't get with someone, I shouldn't date someone, I shouldn't marry someone who is not a firm, believing Christian like myself, and it's going to be okay. And then our morals go down the drain, our, our, our life goal and purpose goes down the drain, and then we're way over here all of a sudden. And so then we have misled ourselves. So then, oh, well, I still believe that God is a merciful God and, and he will, he will, um, you know, he will fix us. And all. Yeah, but that's still, there's still going to be some consequences, though, for our actions most of the time. Not, not all the time, but a lot of the time there's going to be consequences. Consequences. This is actually one of the things that, that's misunderstood about God's anger, right? People think, oh, well, so is God's anger forever or is it not forever? Well, if you look at all the different passages in the Bible where it's talking about God's anger, it's very clear that his anger itself does not last for forever, but the consequences of his, of his anger can last sometimes forever. Um, think of the nation of Edom, right? Um, the, I believe it's Malachi says, um, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. And they say, oh, I'm going to rebuild. But you go ahead and, and do that. I'm going to follow behind you and tear it down. You have an everlasting, never-ending never anger on you. And uh, the idea there isn't really anger is in the sense of, uh, like, oh, I'm mad. But more of like a curse. More of like a, um, from generation to generation, the nation of Edom would never be a thing again. God would reinforce and, and make sure. That's not to say that somebody who is an Edomite cannot be saved. That's not to say that... Um, you know, a, an individual person who was an Edomite couldn't turn to God. That's to say that the nation itself had incurred God's wrath to such a degree that they would never become a nation again. And that's exactly what happened. That that word was fulfilled. Um, by by the time of, of Jesus, I mean, we had Edomia with with you know King um, uh, King Herod, and then you just see kind of them them mingled out, if you want to say it that way, where they're no longer a nation at all. And exactly as God said was going to happen is exactly what did happen. The nation of Edom did not ever come back. They slowly and slowly filtered out and filtered out. And uh, so let's let's look at this, okay? There we go. So when we're looking at false teachers, there's going to be some common traits that we see. Um, the first one is, is we think that a false prophet or false teacher is going to be someone that we don't like, or it's just going to rub us the wrong way. They're going to have a look to them. They're going to look like a wolf. But that's usually not how it is. Sometimes... Sometimes, like everybody's right now is going off about Kenneth Copeland because he has the, the creepy eyes. Okay, all right, I'll give you that one. But typically, that's not what they're going to look like. It's like on uh, the movie um, The Exorcist, right? Demon-possessed people, like they just look weird and sickly in their heads turning around. Yeah, normally, it's not like that. It, it's normally not like that. It just look like regular people. Um, and it's this exact same thing is true for false prophets and false teachers. And uh, yes, absolutely, most of the time... Uh, you will not be able to tell just from looking at them. They are, they are usually very charismatic, very likable. Um, they usually um, are more like a, 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 almost like a father figure, like a mentor. Um, they, in fact, try to put themselves in positions where they're over people. They don't like to be under people, but they love to be over people. And they will specifically, strategically align themselves to get over somebody else. You know, they'll try to become the pastor's advisor. They'll try to, you know, get get little stakes and claims on, on the worship team. or uh, They'll try to look for false, false uh, not false, um, weak links. Like, okay, so this, this pastor has clear direction, but his associate pastor looks like he's a little bit disgruntled. See what I mean? And once again, they all... They all kinds of use different tactics, but manipulation is one of those ones that you see very, very frequently. Sometimes it'll be a more overt manipulation, sometimes a more covert manipulation. Like sometimes they'll, they'll be like, oh, I'm going to go in there. But then, then sometimes it's more of like, um, oh, yeah, he, it really seems like he just he just doesn't really listen to you. You know, and things like little little things where they're always there listening and they're always, you know, trying to build up the, in, your rapport with them and stuff. And not that you shouldn't trust anybody. That's what I'm saying. But... When somebody just blows into town and they just instantly start trying to establish little, um, you know, ant trails, <laughs> little, little uh, ways of getting, you know, up on people, of getting people to, you know, feel obligated to them and loyal to them, that's kind of a warning sign, you know. Um, oftentimes, sometimes people use uh, money as a way of buying people. Um, I, I've actually had numerous people trying to do this for some reason. People think that, that most pastors have a problem with either fame or fortune. I never had a problem with that. Most of the pastors I know have never had a problem with that. Most of the pastors that I know when they drop out of ministry has nothing to do with fame or fortune. 
Everybody who's not a pastor, they think it has everything to do with fame and fortune because that's their hang up. But the genuine pastors that, that I've known, more than 9 out of 10 of them, 9.9% 9 .9 of them, I have never, that's never even been a thing. Pastors drop out of ministry because they get they get tired of the hurt, of the pain, uh, of feeling like they're not getting any traction. People aren't getting saved. People aren't people aren't learning. They just feel like they're spinning their tires, always running and running and trying to take, take, trying to take care of everybody and everything. And it just gets to you and you and you wear out. When there's constantly people who aren't happy, like that is something that weighs you down. Most, when I went through my, my burnout, it wasn't because of, you know, money or, or, or fame. And I always had people trying to buy me and stuff. One guy, he just, he, he advocated for me getting a raise and he just would never drop it. He just kept bringing back to it. You know, oh yeah, you could really use that extra check. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's fine, whatever. You know, I do have five kids, you know, and a wife and a house. You know, I, yes, I, I understand that bills do, do build up. And I understand that we need money to, you know, go throughout life. But, Money to me isn't that important because I understand that even if I don't have it, as I did for most of my life, God will still open doors. Like God's not was not refrained, constrained. God is not constrained by 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 money. He, he's not constrained by time. He can make a seventy year old person super effective in ministry, right? More effective than a twenty year old. He can do that. Um, he he's the God of today. He's the God of of increased crops. He's the God of, of just like amazing miracles, things that just can't happen. He's just the God of it. Things don't just come into being from nothing, but yet God spoke and instantly everything was. Like how crazy is that? That is just, that's crazy. God is the God of, of these big miracle things. So, you know, these false teachers, they're, they're oftentimes likable. Um... Not to say that everybody you like is a false teacher, but that is a warning sign. Um, next up, they oftentimes have a negative history. What is the history of this person? Okay, There was one person who tried to give me a word, and it's like, okay, well, what was her history? Um, she had a history of domestic violence, of hopping from church to church, of getting involved in witchcraft, and um, all these all these things. And it's like, okay, well, that's kind of a neg that's kind of a warning flag for me now. Once again, could God use somebody like Yes, absolutely, God could. But most of the time, he won't. Most of the time, he won't use somebody like that. Okay? Um, once again, this isn't like, there's not like a rule. There's not like a, a verse that I can claim that says, God shall not use anyone who is not perfect enough by human standards. That's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm not talking about perfection. I'm not trying to be good enough to earn God using you. Or, not, not nothing like that. I'm saying that there are, there are some people who think that they are God's anointed to correct everybody, and they always think that they happen to have an opinion on everything. And uh, they, they've said they're policing everybody. This is how you need to do your ministry better. This is how you need to do your ministry. And they nag everybody, and they complain about everything, and they think that they're God's gift to the world. And it's like, no, just shh. For once, close your mouth and learn for once. And, and that's just a good place to be in. As, as Christians, it's a good place to be in the place of, of just learning. There was another woman who, who had a word word of God from the, for the pastor, not me, the, the, the senior pastor. And um, as, soon as, as soon as I said that, I said, she's going to be a problem. She's going to be a problem. And exactly as I called it, she became a huge problem. She mastered it first, you know, kind of make people think that she was you know, worth their time to make people say, oh, depend on me, you know, get, you know, you know how people do, trying to get the upper hand in a situation. And um, so she has this long history of just bitterness and um, divorce after divorce after divorce. Once again, God uses people who are divorced. That's not the issue. But the issue was that she kept getting divorced from her husbands with a nasty attitude about how they were the worst person in the world. And before she even divorced, she already had her mind set on another person trying to build a relationship before the divorce was even final. See what I mean? That just that, Now, once again, that's a conversation for another day. But you can see that pattern. She has a nasty, bitter attitude, goes from church to church to church, cannot be told what to do. Um, you can't really trust her with anything. She pollutes her, anything that she's around. And going from marriage to marriage to marriage... And not even in the sense of, you know, hey, I want to grow. I want somebody who's godly. No, no, not like that. Like, not like, oh, this guy's abusing me and I want to be out of an abusive relationship. No, not, nothing like that. Just, oh, no, I got mad at him. He's wrong. Men are stupid. You know, women, it's women's job to train men. Okay, tell me how that goes. You, you know what I mean? Like, it, 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 we're just a pattern. You can just see a pattern developing there.
Um, negative history. There's an, a, another guy, um, or I guess this is the first guy I'm talking about. There was a guy who came to the church, and he, you know, uh, him and his wife, oh, they want to have a ministry of healing and all this different stuff, this, this word of faith stuff. So, so they have a history of um, supporting false teachers like, you know, Johnson from Bethel or, you know, uh, Kenneth Copeland or that kind of stuff. So false teachers, they already have a history there of, of, of you know, listening to those that kind of nonsense and believing that kind of nonsense. So they don't have a firm um, input, firm mentor basis. They don't have anyone who's over them in authority. They um, they go from church to church. They have no history of a submitted and a faithful attitude in a church. Um, they have they can't be told what to do every time you tell them to do something. You turn around, they're doing the exact opposite thing. Um, they were trying to do their nonsense at our food pantry. And our pastor said, "Hey, no, you, you you can't do that. Like, just just don't do that." And every time they turned turned around, they kept doing it again. They kept doing it again. And um, you know, then they ended up going to a church and giving them this you know this list of things that they needed needed to change and stuff. And it's like, whoa, you are not the pastor of this church. You need to you need to back off. You know, and just that whole negative history. You, you can look over over them and you can see a negative history. They don't have good mentors. They have bad mentors, false teacher mentors. They don't have. They're not under authority. They want to be over everybody else. They're not. Um, um, the, the the input that they receive in their life is is more like, oh, I, I accept that because I enjoy it, and I reject that because I don't enjoy it. Um, and along with that negative history, then just keep an eye on people that you assume are false, and eventually it'll always play out, always. I'm not saying that not to say that if you're a pastor you shouldn't take preventative measures. Oh, absolutely not. In fact, I I, I condone something more like this. If you are a pastor, you need to have make sure that your volunteers that you handpick your volunteers. You know their background. You don't give up, you don't let anybody be involved in a ministry until they've been in your church for like a minimum of like six months, and you um, have them do trial periods before you have them in the position for forever. Like, oh, this person wants to be a youth leader. How about we give you a six-month trial and let's see what happens? You know, I'm, I'm not going to give you trust that's, un, that's unearned, undeserved, you know. Um, so look at their history and then, then look to see what happens in the future too. Um, one of those people that I said uh, gave was giving false words, she ended up in prison. Uh, is that, you know, the kind of person that you went giving you words from God, supposedly words from God? Now, you could obviously point to the Bible and say, but Jeremiah was, was imprisoned. Jeremiah was imprisoned because he had a word about people needing to turn back to God. This person was imprisoned because they got involved again with physical with uh, physical abuse on somebody. So that's a little bit different, and um, it's a little bit different. I feel like with false teachers, you're going to find oftentimes that more often false teachers will give a word of peace, peace, peace. You don't need to change anything. You're, you're fine. More so than they're going to give a, a harsh word. Sometimes there are false teachers who come by and they just have. They can make everything negative. They can make anything a false word. I mean, anything a harsh word. Like, oh, you know, and God is angry with you, and he, he, oh, he hates you, and all this different stuff. You know, down with the gays, down with them fags, burn them all in hell. And yes, okay, yes, that does happen too. I, I'm not trying to deny that. But typically, those ones are easier to spot out because everybody's already irritated with them because they have a big mouth. The ones that you got to watch out for are the ones that are more incognito. So they're going to go in and they're they're not saying down with the gays. You know, they're the people who are. No, you know what? You don't have to change anything. God loves you just the way you the way it is. It's not about sin. It's about your personal comfort level. It's not about becoming more like Christ or submitting your life to God. It's about what makes you happy. The whole tone of it is different. It's not about the kingdom. It's not about eternity that's waiting. It's about now and the immediate pleasure, right? It's about how you can feel more more fulfilled now, how you can have your best life now, how you can have this mystical encounter now, how these things can can help you to um, realize your true potential and find your 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 inner you know your inner guidance and all these different things. And and it's not really rooted in Christ or in the Bible or really anything. It's just kind of rooted in this feel good stuff. Sometimes they call it vibes and use more mystical terms. Um, sometimes they, and, and seances and stuff, sometimes they use more cloak and dagger, like, oh, you, you pray and, and God says that he has storehouses of, of, of blessing for you. And it's like, well, so kind of, 
kind of but um so this is this is actually you know somebody who is um you know involved in an adulterous relationship and i think that maybe god wants them to repent from that adultery just throwing that out there could be wrong um another thing that you see is uh, so so not with, with the negative history not just things in the past now I know Satan loves to bring up our past and say, oh, well, you know, you're a failure. God can never use you. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about they have a long history that is still being repeated. You can't be surprised when somebody does according to their nature. There was somebody who um, had a routine of moving, running from problems, divorcing once things got too serious. That's it. Over and over again. And I convinced myself that they were going to be good friends to us. And so I tried to be a good friend. That was not smart. You can't get mad at him and her for doing what they inevitably always did. They left and ran and talked bad about people. That's what they always did. Yeah, you can't be surprised. Excuse me. When somebody does what's according to their nature, that can't. They can't really be a point. Oh, wow! I didn't say I'm coming. Well, you should have. Um, so then the next thing is they lack the heart of God. They don't really care about people. They don't really care about God's message and the faithfulness to it. They go to extremes. They either. Uh, love people and never mention God, or they, or, they, or, they, or they love God and hate people. And obviously we know that both of those views are completely unbiblical, so there's that. But the heart of God is more than just love for people. It's also, um, God is very concerned about holiness. God is very concerned about um, faithfulness, about, um, you know, submitting your life to him, about, you know, seeking him and making him first. Um, God is very concerned about those things. God is concerned that we um, don't bind ourselves in sin, but that we find freedom in, in, in that and then walk in obedience to him. That, that's, that's the way of life. God is concerned about that. And, and so a false teacher isn't going to have that. They're not going to have that heart of God, that, that focus of God. Now, there's some people who get like this, um, oh, they just don't tell it like, like, like it is anymore. Nobody wants to hear the truth. You know, uh, nobody, everyone wants to sugarcoat the gospel. And, and all that they want to do is sit around and talk about, you know, God's judgment and how everybody's going to go to hell and all this different stuff. And I'm not talking about that. Like, it, whether that's true or not, you don't have to say it in such an arrogant and unwise, foolish way. You can present the gospel in a wiser way than that. Like, in fact, the Proverbs even tells us, make wisdom acceptable. Like, you don't have to go and be shoot off your mouth and, and just show how you don't really care. Oh, well, if I really care, then I'll, I'll, then I'll say these things. Yeah, here, here's the thing, though. Um, from these same people, they would get very upset if you talked to them like that. You know? Oh, uh, you're, you're just a jerk, and, and God's going to judge you for how, for how you don't love people. They get just as mad at you as people get mad at them. They're hypocrites. They say, oh, I've got the word of, word of God, but they don't. Um, sometimes people think that having the word of God is being real angry. Oh, God hates your son. It's like, well, you, you know, it's really not. You know, once again, if you don't have love, you, you have nothing. You, you have nothing. And you can tell from somebody's face that they really love you. You can, you can genuinely tell. And uh, most of the time, the people that those prophets of God... They're not really, they're not really talking um, in a way that you know that they love you. But with that being said, false teachers will oftentimes go the other route and say, "Look, oh yeah, I love you. I'm just so happy that you're here." You know, and it's like, well, um, that's pretty fake. And once again, the the more you wait and observe, the more if you just keep your mouth shut and watch, this it'll play itself out, and you'll you'll see it for yourself, and you really won't have to be told. You'll you'll know. The trick is don't get overly attached to somebody. Um, who is a who is a false teacher because then you're going to write it off and you're going to like to like them so you're going to be like oh no it's not that big of a deal and so on and so forth and it's just going to end really poorly um, look for um, do they have signs of a corrupt or immoral lifestyle um, maybe they do things like uh, sleeping around maybe they um, advocate um, you know all these faith things and now you have the power of yourself and and uh, how you can be be greater than Jesus was and uh, you know, um, you can you, you, looking. At, sin isn't that big of a deal. You know, it's it, it's it's fine. Hell isn't hell isn't really even real. You know, it's just it's fine. Uh, everything just whatever floats your boat, whatever makes you feel good. Um, you know, and, and it's totally fine. Uh, and then if you ask them like really hard questions, like, is this a sin? And they'll say, yeah, that's a sin. And you'll say, okay, so what is sin? 
what are the effects of sin? And, and they'll use the same words that typical Christianity will use, but they'll say it differently, almost like a cult or, or like the occult. They'll use the same words, but it'll mean something else. Like Jesus isn't actually God. He is, they use the term Jesus for more of an enlightened person or like a Buddha almost like, and throwing in all these new age nonsense things. Where it's like, oh, oh, so you're saying, yes, Jesus saves us from our sin, but what you mean is enlightenment comes to free us from those things that are making us not happy. Oh, well, that's a lot different than the gospel. See, the gospel is God is holy and pure, and we aren't. And we have estranged ourselves from a war that we we started. And through Jesus, though, we can find complete forgiveness, not from our goodness, but because he stands in, in our place. He, he, he washes us in his blood. He puts on his clean garments and presents us to the, far, to the Father. We are prisoners. Jesus sets us free. We are oath breakers. Jesus makes us men of promise. See, it, it, that's that's the, the essence of the gospel, that there is something not good in me, and there is something definitely not right with my relationship with God. But through Jesus, there is a way forward. There's a way to heaven. There's a way to salvation. And heaven is, is an actual literal place where not everybody's going to go. And salvation is not just simply understanding or being free of burdens. Salvation is something much more special than that. And um, so... Uh, there's a corrupt immoral lifestyle and the spiritual implications or the physical implications for this maybe they're involved with sometimes they can be involved with things like heavy drinking and drugs and all this different stuff yeah but sometimes their 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 corruption isn't going to be so so evident uh, but they are going to have like a two two face kind of thing they'll present different faces to different people they'll say things and really make you believe it but they don't like just saying what they think you want to hear and um they will uh like I was mentioning one of them, um, she was, you know, giving these words and, and everything from God. But at the same time, she was gossiping and complaining and causing problems in the church. That that other that other girl that I was mentioning, she was saying, oh, she was, oh, all sweet and smiles. But then she was, she was being extremely disrespectful to her, to her mom and um, lying about what the pastor said. And then when I called her on it, she never once admitted to that. She just wouldn't. And she said, oh, I don't lie. And I, I gave her examples of how she was lying. And she said, oh, no, I don't lie. And it's like, okay. And then, Or she'd say this, and this was a real big thing. I don't do that. I, 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 I used to do that, but I don't do that anymore. Since when? An hour ago? Like, it takes longer than that to change. People can change. I know what I'm saying. But they can't change in five seconds. Like, not only that, but it's like, well, so then what happens when you do it again? Oh, you know, I, yeah, I, I messed up, but, you know, I don't do that anymore. It's like, but you just did it five seconds ago. Anyways. Um, so they have that corrupt and moral lifestyle. Like I say, that she she ended up end, ended up in jail for for again, you know, uh, physical abuse. And it's like, well, you, you know, this kind of unhealthy life cycle you're in. You're you're in a guy. You're in a relationship with a guy that you don't care about, manipulating him, breaking up just so that you can get back with him and have the you know the control in the relationship, um, pushing sexual things on him just so that you can you know feel like make him feel like you own him some more, you know saying these mean mean things to belittle him, being physically abusive, all this different stuff is like yeah that that that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like God's not going to use somebody like that. He, maybe maybe he would use them once. Maybe that would that wouldn't be the beyond the realm of possibility, I guess. But to say that they are a prophet, no. And that's exactly what that specific one claims. Like, oh, I I found my calling. You know, I don't have I don't have a purpose in life. I live on my mom's couch, even though I'm 30 years old. I don't have a job. I just kind of sit around and mooch off people and manipulate my boyfriend. But I finally found my my goal and my life purpose, and that is to to give the word of God. And it's like, do, are you familiar with the Bible? Oh no, I never even read the whole thing through. I don't know anything about it. It's like. Okay, and so then she'd say a word, and it's like, well, actually, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says this, and then so then eventually, what happened is after she went to prison, she she decided that God wouldn't ever send anybody to hell for punishment for their sin. Everybody will be saved. Okay, so you can kind of see, you can look at that and say, okay, there's a corrupt immoral lifestyle. There's a negative history. There's a lack of the heart of God. She's not at all concerned with the things that God's concerned about. Um, and she makes tries to make herself likable. So already she's got four four star ticks against her. Next up is not under authority. You would be surprised how big of an issue this is. God has ways of growing us. He 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 speaks to us oftentimes through other people. 
And that blows people away. They're like, no, I have to have special revelations. That I don't need the Bible. I don't need the church. I just need my own special, you know, dome of solitude. And that's gonna, that's good enough. And I can just get have bad attitudes. That's not why I don't go to church. I'm not going to forgive them. And pastors are, are all corrupt. And, uh, and, you know, it's okay for me to have this bad attitude, even though that God tells us repeatedly about forgiveness and not letting the root of bitterness inside of us. But whatever. Uh I guess it's just whatever you decided is. Um, and then they can't be under authority. They, they can't have somebody else in them what to do. They can't be corrected by somebody. They can't have somebody discipling them and mentoring them. They always have to be the fount of all knowledge. They know everything about everything. There was a, one, of the pe one person who was giving words um, actually claimed that they had special knowledge of demons, that they, they knew what they were thinking, they knew what they were saying, and uh, you know they, she just had this special connection with them. And I said, how do you know that... Um, they're not telling you what they what they want you to think, and the thought had never occurred to her. She said, oh, oh, well, no, because I, 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 I know. And I was like, how do you know that you know? Like, what are you basing that off of? You, you say that you know what they're thinking and saying because you believe that, but do, what do you base that off of? So she had this real arrogance of, oh no, I have this hidden knowledge that is hidden from all people that I have. And this wasn't like God wasn't revealing this to, to her, which why would he reveal that to people anyways? She just had this intimate knowledge of the workings of demons. And it's like, okay. So she had like these little conversations, you know, and stuff. Like, oh, they told you that. And uh, one one person, um, she said, hey, um, why don't you sing, why don't you sing louder or whatever? And he's all, um, I, I don't know, do you think I should? Or no, 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 that's how it goes. He said, he said this. He started the conversation. He said, um, was I singing too loud? And she said, no, you were singing fine. They told you that, they were, that you were singing too loud. And it's like, okay. Kind of creepy. So not under authority. There's no, she, she doesn't have a pastor. She has, she's a lone island. And with the church, it's meant to be a family. It's meant to be something that is bound to each other. It's meant to be something that there is like a risk, yes, but there is also a, 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 a a foundation, a, a, a interlocking grip, uh, um, a connection, and um, you'll find that these false these false teachers they're they're not they're not submitted they're not they're not among people they don't see people as their their peers they see people as their lessers um, they have complete knowledge in any given situation and you know they don't need anybody telling them they don't need people correcting them um, they they never they they never have a ministry that's underneath somebody else. Right. Here's the thing. Authority is always borrowed. Any authority that is given, I mean, any authority that you have is authority that has been given. Right. So you, you have a pastor of a church. He's under authority. Right. Every, like, yes, all positions of authority are not just you are your own source of authority. Right. Even when when kings, you know, were, were kings, they still had to worry about coups. They still had to worry about um, you know, the whole, oh, God appointed me thing. Well, so then where's your authority from? Well, supposedly from God. See what I mean? Uh, there, there, there's no no authorities. Or they just make lip service of authority. Um, it's not really something that they... But they want to be over everybody else. They want to tell everybody else what to do, but they don't want to be corrected. They don't want to be... Um, they don't want to be subjected. They don't want to um, have to answer to anybody. They just want themselves. And that's a very common thing. Um, the guy that I was telling you about, him and his wife, um, they hadn't been under anybody's authority for years. Um, the woman, like I said, she started to put these words from God to the leadership, of course, because she, she couldn't be under anybody, especially since at that church, the leadership was Mel. Was Mel. And so it's, being a man-hater, she absolutely could not put up with that. And so she had to have these words of God from, you know, for, for the leadership. And I was like, okay, all right, maybe you're right. But turned out she was wrong. Um, and then, or at least... Partially wrong. Yeah. Um, it's hard to say for sure because there was one person that seemed like God was really actually speaking to them through it. So, yeah, I could be wrong. Um, the uh, the other girl that I was saying that talked to talked to demons, she was never under anybody's authority. Her parents, her she was very disrespectful to, to her parents, and that's one of the things of of, of you know one of the core things about God is, you know, the very last thing the prophets say before the New Testament picks up with Jesus is that he wants to reconcile the fathers to the sons, lest he come and have to smite the land. That's the last thing he says in the book of Malachi before Matthew starts. And then he says again and again, the first, the first rule with the promise, honor your mother and father that you might live long. 
I think that God would really like people to be reconciled and to forgive and to not hold grudges and to be on good terms with their parents. I, I'm, I could be wrong here, but when you see a theme like that, it just keeps coming up over and over again. It's like, oh, oh, oh okay. So the gospel is going to bring time. It's going to bring conflict between families. Absolutely. It's going to be a dividing line. Absolutely. But as far as it depends on the Christian, they're supposed to have a good relationship or at least as good as they can. Right? They're not supposed to have a bad attitude in their hearts against their father and mother, regardless of what their father and mother actually did. And it's at this point that somebody always says, oh, well, you know, I have adopted father and mother. It's like, yeah, no, that doesn't get you out, out of the loop. You do have to forgive. The, ten, the, the core of Christianity is forgiveness. Like, if you try and remove Christianity from it, you're, you're not a Christian. That, that's, that's it. In fact, God even said that, hey, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. So it's, it's that simple. And Paul and Paul and the leaders leaders constantly said, "Hey, look, if if you you need to forgive these people, even as Christ Himself forgave you." So um, they're they're not under authority. They, they they are the fount of all knowledge. They know exactly what's going on. They don't need anybody else. Um, another thing, uh, they have faulty core beliefs. So they might even use the same Christianese terms like salvation and resurrection and all these different things. But oftentimes if you ask them for a definition, it won't be the same definition that the Bible actually gives as a definition. Um, like uh, Jesus as God. Okay, so what does that mean? Was he always God? What, what, what happened there? Like what, what, what do you – tell me what you think about Jesus. Who do you think he is? And if you actually know what the Bible says about Jesus, how he is God, referred to as Yahweh – Obviously, we're talking about. So, um, they have faulty core beliefs. They they don't really know who Jesus is. They don't really understand how the Holy Spirit fits fits into the picture. They get hung up on the whole Jesus submitting to the Father, and they don't quite understand that because they themselves are not under authority. So it's hard for them to understand how that works. How God and, and God, how the Father and the Son can both be equal, and yet. Be submitted. That's something that just completely escapes them. And uh, they, uh, let's see, what are some other core beliefs? The Bible. The, the Bible is not necessarily the Word of God. Maybe it has parts that are word, the Word of God. Or maybe there are things in it that are from God. But by and large, it's just an interesting book. And our re revelation definitely does top that. And it's like, oh, huh, who knew? Um, so they don't understand the Bible, they don't understand Jesus or the Holy Spirit, they don't understand the purpose of the church or even the importance of the church, um, they don't understand sin or heaven or salvation. Just the very core of it, their, their, their core beliefs are skewed. Um, salvation, it just becomes a, a, a process not of get, getting rid of, you know, ad addressing sin, more, excuse me, more it becomes a process of living a better life, being a better person, not, not about, you know, being filled with the Holy Spirit. No, that's not what they're interested in. They just want you to learn how to be a better version of yourself. And it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, that's not, once again, not what the Bible, not the Bible says. Um, this oftentimes, not all the time, but oftentimes they're into uh, real showy things. So um, they'll want to do something that really catches attention. They'll, they'll want to um, start up a ministry that people can look at them and say, wow, they really care. Like, um, we were giving away socks on the curb. You know, hey, anybody who wants to come and get socks, I mean, it's cold, and these were some nice, good good socks. We're giving away free. Um, we got this shipment in, and, um, you know, we were given this at, with the understanding that we were going to give it away, so here we are. And we, we, made, we made it a Facebook event. We stood out on the curb, and we said, pull up. It was during COVID. And we said, you, you don't have to go inside. You pull upside. We'll give you a bag. You tell us who's in your house. We'll give you. We'll give you a bag of socks. And um, I actually found out later these were very nice, expensive socks that were donated. And uh, I didn't know that. I mean, I wasn't there to to say, "Hey, look at what we're doing for you." We were there to try and help people to stay warm in the cold. That was it. There was there was no ulterior motive. That was it. Now, everybody thinks that the pastors and stuff have these evil, you know, alternative, uh, ulterior motives and, and, and how they're always corrupt and how they always just want what's in it for them. And I, I was just trying to help people. Like, that was it. Um, but this guy and this girl, they, they pull up and, and they want to get involved with things like that where it's showy, where they can be in front of people, they can provide for people's needs, where people can feel like they need them, like they owe it to them, like, oh, ah, you know, this is something that builds up. And watch out how people manipulate you with stuff like this. They, they do stuff where it's like, oh, 
oh, they care. They're always there for me. They'll listen. And they, they give you the sympathetic ear. They're always there at the front doing, oh, look, we're, look at what we're doing. Oh, for God, for you. And all these big showy things, anything that gets them out front where people start to grow dependent on them. Um, re uh, there's often times a rejection of um, and Actually, one of the ways that you can combat that, the whole showy thing, is having people do background checks and having them be a member a member before they do things, having them be uh, go to your church for uh, so long before they get involved in stuff like that, having them not be the forefront if they have to s climb a ladder they're m less likely to uh, to do it because false prophets and false teachers they thrive in atmospheres that aren't well solidified so a pastor that maybe isn't confident and doesn't have an associate pastor and doesn't have a method of hiring and firing and doesn't like to deal with problems and just kind of lets things go and you know th these are kind of the places that they look for if there's a church that really has their ducks in a row and it's hard for a false teacher to get in there and get front front and center Another reason why it's important to really make sure that you have people uh, in ministries that are going to watch out for um, how things are developing um, because it prevent, once again prevents like, oh, hey, this guy over here, you kept trying to pull people aside, you know, and I think I was kind of getting bad vibes. So I tried to listen in and uh, he was saying some weird things. And so I think we're going to have to maybe not have him help or, see what I mean, that kind of stuff, which once again is done away with if you don't have open volunteers, you choose the volunteers like, hey. I like your work ethic. You have been a staple in this church. You are super important to us. I would love it, and I would be honored. And I'm not saying lie to them. I'm saying the, the, genuinely believe this. Like, who do you believe this about? And I say, I would be honored if you would help us with this event. Would you be interested in that? And then if they say no, say, you know what? That's okay. It's not like, oh, but I really want you to. Or another thing that we do all the time is we try and pressure people in by having the word of God, right? So um, I really feel like God wants you to do this and say, well, you know, if God wants him to do that, I'm sure you have to trust that he's going to talk to them about it. Like, you can't just pull the God card and expect everybody to bow over backwards for you like this. Uh, you know, don't try and pressure people. Don't try to make it a thing about, uh, you know, bullying people to get them to do what you want them to do. Um, so, um, so they have faulty core beliefs. They, they, they try and get involved in showy things. Um, they have a rejection of, of correction. You can't tell them what to do. You can't correct a bad attitude. Um, you try and talk to them, they'll turn it back on you. Somehow, it, through these gymnastics, they'll they'll attack you viciously. Da -da 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 -da, try and get you off your game. They'll they'll twist it back on you and say, "Oh, that's what you're doing." Um, there there was a person who um, now get this. Okay, I had this friend. And he wanted to date this girl, and I said, that's a really bad idea. This person is a terrible, terrible influence on you. Like, she has nothing in common with you. You're not even attracted to her. This is not going to end well. He has my opinion, and so I told him. Now, that's not gossip, is it? Because my friend asked me about an opinion about dating somebody, and I gave him my reasons, my, and then I gave him biblical reasons, too. So he ignored that, and he, he went and got with her. And then um, he asked me, he said, uh, I don't think I should have gotten with her. I just, uh, and I said, yeah, well, I, I agree. You know, like you, this is this is not going well. She's talking to demons. You should probably break it off. Once again, that's not gossip. So then, eventually, she she kept doing this thing where she'd break up with them and get back with them. And so then, one of the times they were broken up, I assumed that they were actually done. I shouldn't have done that, I guess. And uh, so I was talking to him and I was saying, you know, I know that it hurts now, but you know, you've got, and I was being a little bit snarky about it at, at that point because. You know, the whole on, it was just too much drama and it was just kind of, yeah, I shouldn't handle it in the way, I'm not going to lie, I'm sure I shouldn't have handled it in the way I should, that I did, but but I did. Um, and then they got back together and he showed her the text. And so then I, I was talking to her because she came to a church event and she was trying to gossip about the pastor and her mom and lying about what happened. And I addressed her and I said, hey, you, you know, we're not going to do that. We're not going to gossip about the pastor. Complete denial, didn't admit to anything, and then just said, oh, no, you, you gossip because you said this to him about, about me. And I said, uh, what? <laughs> that's not, that's not, that's not gossip. Like, the, those are things that I would actually say to you, too. Like, you are talking to demons, you should probably get your crap in order and stop trying to stream this guy along. And that's, that's nothing that, that's, and then I talked to him, I said, why did you do this? You, you made it look like I was gossiping. Why didn't you tell her that you were the one who initiated the conversation and asked for advice? Like, why did you do that? Now it looks like I'm the one who's gossiping. Well, needless to say that 
you know, that whole on and off, on again and off again thing, you know, I just kind of separated myself from it and it blew up. Like things like that always do, you know. There's really no winning in some situations. When I when I first got into ministry, I thought that, that there were, were that there were some situ like there was no situation that couldn't be a win. Wrong, 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 wrong. Um, so they, they they can't be corrected. They can't be told what to do. They can't um, they can't admit to failure in themselves. They can't uh, apologize or repent or say sorry or anything like that. Um, they 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 just nope. They, they, you're just trying to tear me down. Like you're not from God. All these different things. Uh, one time there's a word given. Uh, that was actually for these uh, for these people who were giving false words and, and just trying to destroy a church. And so the wife actually stands up and she tries to give this word of basically how everything's fine and you just need to, you know, love and joy and happiness. And a word was given in the middle of her little nonsense spiel that basically said, you are lying to the people and you are being a false prophet and I'm going to judge you for that. And literally in the middle of, of, of her false word that she was giving, completely cut her off. And rather than admitting to it, she never admitted to it. She just tried to argue with the person that was getting, that gave that gave the actual word, and everybody knew. Like there was just this whole sense that 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 fell that fell on the building. Y you say whatever you want about the Holy Spirit moving or, or people giving words or whatever. Say whatever you want, but everybody walked out of there knowing exactly what was going on, and uh, it was like a heaviness. Like God's wrath was imminent. I, I honestly wanted to hide somewhere. It was very scary. It it was just completely overwhelming sense. And um, you know, I, I understand now parts of the Bible where people are you know are faced with the immensity of God, and they're just completely like, oh, you know, even angels can scare the cra scare the crap out of people. So. Um, they, they cannot be corrected. They can't. They are unteachable. They are unpastorable. They just think that they know everything, and they they will fight you on everything. Uh, they're they're self centered, and not just self centered for themselves. They tr they try and get other people to be self centered too. They plan other people's ego, and it's all about them. It's all about what they want. Um, they have no regard for scripture. <coughs> they don't care about scripture, even if they talk about the Bible and how good it is and all these different things. They won't actually like point people to the Bible and point people to God. They'll, 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 they'll misquote things to kind of back up what they want. They'll just kind of sugarcoat things and twist it how they want it to twist. Um, oftentimes they won't have uh, any good long-term relationships. They will have a bunch of short-term relationships. Um, this is because as they go from place to place, um, they, they're not able to really establish anything permanent. They come, they show flash, and eventually their plans fall apart. Or they they stay there for longer and nobody really knows them, but they know that they want to know them and that they like them. Um, so how do they respond? This is a great way of, of seeing if somebody is false or not. Once again, not to say that every that you can be perfect. That's not what I'm saying. But there are some just repetitive cycles that you see. What what does the what does a person do when you don't listen? I remember there was this one guy that was giving a word, and, he, and he, it was so obviously fake. And he said this thing that I had always asked God for in my prayers when I was younger. And it was kind of a little bit creepy, which you would think, oh, that is surely from God. But I didn't have that confirmation in my spirit, like, yes, this is from God. It was more like a, hmm. Almost like how in seances, demons who appear to people as deceased family. It's not really their deceased family. It's, it's demons who are portraying a role. And they'll have these details. And it felt a lot like that, is what it, really what it felt like. And um, he would do this thing where he would say something, oh, 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 oh that was God. Oh, oh, and try to like hype you up on it because he knew that he didn't have the anointing. He knew that the Holy Spirit wasn't really speaking. But he wanted that sense of power, that t good, happy, filly, tingly, sweet, try to hype you up. Oh, and God says this. Oh, 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 Ooh, wow. Ooh. Ooh. And you go go and be like, and one, one, one time he, um, he did that to me and I just said, hmm. And then he kept trying to bring it back up. Like, hey, what'd you think about that, that, that word? And I said, hmm, I've been thinking about it. You know, not really confirming or denying because it's like, you know, it, it it wasn't time. I felt like there was just some still some things that needed to be played out, and so I waited, and it worked itself out, and we ended up having to having to address that issue, but in a much grander scale. Um, so 
Uh, what do they do when you don't listen? Do they get all irritated like like one of those girls that I was saying? In fact, I think that was in my last video that I was talking about uh, false words. She gave this this false word that completely contradicted what the Bible said and jerked verses out of context and I said, no, that's not from God. And she got all upset and, and aggressive and, you know, tried to bully me into believing and, you know, tried to, oh, well, yeah, God's going to, ooh, you better, you better walk carefully because if you're saying that this isn't from God, ooh, ah. It's like, okay, whatever. Like, I didn't stutter. It's not from God. Like, okay, like, I don't have to pray and ask if something that is against the Bible is from God. God doesn't contradict himself. He's not a God of contradiction. See, I'm, I'm confident in who God is. So that confidence helps me to not be misled by people who want me to fear them or who want me to um, be subject to them or so on and so forth. So what do they do when you don't listen? Um, if there's that kind of response, yeah. Typical, typically, um, people who God really does give a word to, you'll see them approach a lot more humbly. You know, I... I think that I think this word is is from God and 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 you know and then they'll say it and, and they'll kind of talk to you they won't just run off like what we call drive by words from God you know where you uh, God tells you to stop being a jerk and walk away real quick and it's like um probably maybe maybe, maybe but you're you know I don't know. so there has to be some kind of like um an analysis of you know, their attitude while they're giving the word, before they give the word, and after they give the word. And uh, how do they respond to leaders? Do they have a problem with authority? Do they have a problem with, sometimes they have a problem with one group, like uh, maybe with men or maybe with black people or whatever. They'll just have, you know what I mean? Like God, <laughs> false teachers are oftentimes going to have a problem where they see some people as less. Sometimes it's Hispanic. Sometimes it's Native Americans. Sometimes it's black people. It, really can be anybody sometimes it's white people whatever it is it's not one of unity it's not one of what's the end game christ or is the end game you know my grudge um how do they respond to leaders talking to them how do they respond to a leader that says that word was not from god um how do they respond when they are instructed you know you've been saying that you've been giving words from god but let me show you um what the bible says if somebody's going to go to the point and say this word is from God, then they need to be okay with the fact that if it's not from God, they will be challenged. And just because they thought something doesn't make it true. So the point here that I want you to get, the point isn't, are they perfect? Okay, nobody's going to be perfect. God uses imperfect people. God is, And God still uses people who have a messed up past. But people who have a, a current lifestyle that's that's more what i'm talking about what what is the quality of their faith and what's their presentation like what's what's going on there what what the, look at look at how they present themselves how they talk what the what the what what they're saying how they're saying it um pick up on their on their clues what what is the quality of their faith would you say that they are a mature person of faith that is leading other people into maturity do they have examples of, pe of bringing people to Christ? Or is this like, is there any proof, like any any life proof that they have actually, um, that they have actually, you know, helped people to mature and to become more like Christ and anything, anything in there that shows that. And so I think that that's a good enough spot as anywhere to, 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 to end. Um, you know, be thinking about this. Uh, not everyone is a false teacher. Not every, not, not, not every, just because people can mess up, you know, absolutely. Um, and you need to look at the word to see if it's from God, and you need to look at the, look at the person to see if they have the trait of a false prophet or a false speaker. So I hope that this was helpful. Um, I really hope that, hope that it helped cause you to look at the Bible more and read the Bible more and kind of look to see how you think Paul and, and the other uh, writers of the Bible um how they dealt with with false teachers and, and what they saw as signs of false teachers and uh okay well uh you know there's one more thing i want to mention y you have to be aware that the holy spirit is the one who calls and equips people and he will give wisdom he will give wisdom before you jump to your conclusion of whether someone's false or true wait in prayer and just kind of humbly seek after god and, and see what he has to say and i think that um you might be surprised